Spoilers. Top Gun Maverick. There's going to be two levels to these spoilers. I'm going to spoil stuff because I'm releasing this a couple days early. Light stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to spoil heavy stuff. So this video in those however many days, two, two and a half days, uh, will be for people who are interested to know a little bit more before they actually want to invest the time to watch this movie. So that's the light spoilers. And then the second half is just for people who have already seen the movie and want to, you know, get some thoughts on it, uh, bounce those off their own thoughts and have a conversation in the comments or people who really just don't give a shit are not going to see it. And they just want to know. So let's start. Uh, Actually, let's start with the start of the movie, which I think was its only mistake. Uh, all right. So everyone who's seen it or not seen it, the movie starts almost exactly the same way. Like literally, I'm like besides adding, I think, only and women to that opening text, which is a nice update. Uh, it, it starts the same, same opening text, same uh scene and music and all that from the air force carrier that we saw in the first movie except where that whole air force carrier sequence segued into a further sequence remember with uh goose and maverick and uh the guy who's freaking out who's having a panic attack who was previously number one and would have gone to top gun uh the next week that whole seat yeah they don't do anything like that uh, and this is where I think the mistake is. Uh, the mistake is putting the that beginning at that beginning, uh, at the beginning of the movie. Uh, I know that makes no sense, but I'll get there. So the first movie did that whole title and, you know, the, the carrier sequence with the music and the, hey, we're all grooving uh, kind of vibe. To set the tone, which is great, and then it moved on from there. This one does that, and then instead of going on to some mission that's happening from that uh, Air Force carrier, um, it just cuts to Maverick somewhere else, doing something else. So really... The purpose of that was to tell us, don't worry, you are seeing a sequel to the movie you've already seen. Like, I get it. It's been a while. You want to reassure the audience that, like, we're not going to mistreat these characters, but it's, like, fucking Tom Cruise producing the movie. I, I think if you were ever worried... Like, anyone who's already worried is not going to have their worries um, evaporated. You know, it, it won't have just fallen away like, oh, you did exactly the same thing again. I'm not worried at all. Because that's kind of a signal, it can be a signal, that you really don't know what you're doing. If all you're doing is copying what we've already seen, it, almost exactly. And just recreating it shot for shot kind of deal. Now, again, I don't want that opening text and sequence gone. I just want to move it. So I think the right way to have opened this movie would have been no text, no aircraft carrier, no playing the same song again. Cut straight to, I want to say Ethan Hunt, <laughs> Maverick. I really will not know his legal name. Uh, Maverick doing his thing. His Mach 9 thing. Great fucking sequence. If you haven't seen it, where we pick up with Maverick is he is living in the desert in California with his own plane that he works on. And he's working, uh, his day job is testing this plane that can be flown at Mach 9 and their goal is Mach 10 
Um, but this guy is coming and he wants to shut them down and get their funding and use it for drones. So instead of testing Mach 9 and then testing Mach 10 two months from now, this is their last chance. He's showing up before their Mach 9 test to shut them down. They've got to start sooner than they were planning to go for Mach 10, doing more than the, what they were planning. And the sequence is stunning. It's gorgeous. Outside of the moment when Maverick meets up with the team and you can tell something's off, That outside of that, it was so fucking corny. It was, it was like... I don't know. They could have just dialed the corn back a little bit. It was like a scene made for babies. Uh, just those first like five seconds. I don't know why. Maybe you'll you'll get the same vibe. But I was like, this is a weird tone. But it, it's like blink and you'll miss it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't ruin the scene. Um, but it's this. It gives like this feeling of awe that like maybe people saw in the first man or uh, whatever that uh, Armstrong movie with. Damien Chazelle and Ryan Gosling was, I think it was first man. You get the feeling that movie wanted to give you. And I think did, uh, it <laughs> just so big sequence. It's, it's fucking great. But Maverick being Maverick, even though he succeeds at Mach 10, he pushes it and crashes the plane. And, uh, it was hilarious and it was a great start. And then, uh, <laughs> drone dude, Played by Ed Harris, by the way. Uh, fantastic. Um, he takes him off the base and is like, you ruined the $30 million plane, so I'm going to fire you. But literally, as we were driving over there, I got a text from one of the other parts of the military that was like, don't fire him. We need him. Um, and... I get it. I get where this is coming from, but Ed Harris is like, drones are the future. Human pilots are the past. It's basically Spectre. The whole Spectre thing, or uh, is it more like C in... Oh, no, Spectre. I actually meant to be talking about Skyfall. It's kind of like Spectre with C. is like, you're a fossil. Technology is the future. And that factor, this whole setup, it factors into the plot. N nope. Not a bit. Not, not one bit. There's never a moment later where they're like, maybe we should send in the drones. Never. Get a pilot who can do this run or we'll send in the drones. Not even mentioned. Honestly, it would have been better just to rewrite the scene and not say that it's for drones, but for like a new pilot's program. Because it never comes up again. Just, just say that like, look, I'm sending you to the one place. I'm trying to turn into like a relic because we've got these new teaching methods that are better and then then you know i don't know treat it like that but the whole drone thing is just like wow what an original plot point and you know if it had been woven into the story i still would have been like oh that's kind of cute you know we've never seen that story before um but it never goes anywhere so like just the Cut that out. Uh, but when he sends him to Top Gun, then, then when he dismisses him, then let's get the title. Let's get that opening text. Then let's get the aircraft carrier. Then after we get the aircraft carrier, then let's get Tom Cruise on a fucking motorcycle trying to race a... Uh, why did I blank on plane? I meant to say jet. But... Both hordes escape me for a second. Um, then, then, because, uh, you know, that whole opening sequence, seeing Maverick being Maverick, no matter where he is, whether he's flying these planes or just, just flying a plane around the world and it being stunning. That was a great sequence. 
keep 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 the nostalgia at bay for us. Like give us those ten minutes of all new stuff, and then poof, title song, aircraft carrier, kind of groovy employee people who help the I don't know the military. Um, then we get into Top Gun Academy. We get a lot of stuff that we've seen before, uh, but before that, we see something we've never seen before. Jennifer Connelly. And this is where Hollywood's just fucked up because, one, uh, the woman from the first movie should have come back for the second movie. I don't know why she didn't. I don't know if it was her choice, if it was the choice of the producers. I don't know. Maybe she had a bad experience with one of the producers. She is a working actress. I looked it up while we were waiting uh, for the movie to start. She's a working actress. She's still working. She could have come back if she wanted to. So maybe she didn't want to. So I wouldn't wish that on her. But, uh, you know, either have Jennifer Connelly in both or the other actress in both. Um, And also... Whoever's going to be in both, the other one needs to have a better career. <laughs> like, both these women are spectacular. Uh, I've only seen uh, not Jennifer Connelly in the first Top Gun, but she was great. Like, what the fuck? Like, Jennifer Connelly and... The, I feel really bad. I need to look up her name. Uh, they, they both deserve much fuller careers than Hollywood has given them. Bar none. Uh, but... The reason I say it should be one woman or the other for both roles in both movies is because there's so many returning male characters, even dead ones, and the one person who doesn't return is like the woman who finally locked down Maverick, the thing that no other woman could do. I mean, these are outdated um, ideals, but like you spend a whole movie (laughs) and Goose's wife is like a hundred people have cried because maverick is a taken man like this is fucking national treasure that we're seeing it's the unknown this is a miracle that one person could do this and it would have been so easy to have charlie kelly mcgillis i looked her up because i was feeling bad for being such a shitter with her name uh it would have been so fascinating. Like, this is the woman who is like gravity to Maverick. But he's still Maverick. So he still disappears every once in a while. And at one point, she had a baby with somebody else. Maybe even married them and then divorced them for a time. But it's gra- Charlie and Maverick, they're like gravity. They keep coming back to each other. But instead, we get Jennifer Connelly doing a great role, but... Like, it's just, it undercuts Charlie in the first movie, and also there's, like, clunky exposition to have to introduce this person, obviously, since nobody else really needs to be introduced. Or, rather, nobody else is introduced in such a clunky way. Because we get a whole new generation of pilots introduced so smoothly. And I'm not just talking about uh, Goose's son, Rooster. I mean the whole crew. They did a great job. No clunky dialogue amongst them. Uh, but Jennifer Connelly's first lines are very clunky. Uh, but we get Rooster coming in minutes before Maverick is leaving. And there's such heartbreak in Maverick. Such an open wound in both of them from their shared trauma of losing Goose in the last one. And it hit so hard. Even that first time Seeing Jennifer Connelly's character even looking at Ethan, not Ethan, not Ethan Hunt, uh, Maverick, looking at Rooster. Just that. And we don't stop there. 
we continue on. He accepts the mission. Uh, uh, he's already there. But he goes in to go teach. That first walk-in, though, he was seeming a little, like, cocksured about himself. I think that was a little bit too much, considering we just saw him on the edge of uh, emotional crisis. Um, but he goes in. He starts being his own maverick self. And they do a really good job. This is where I think they improved on the original. The original had Maverick and Goose going to Top Gun, training, getting a lot of, uh, you know, friction amongst the people there. And then when they graduate, the, uh, uh, oh, uh, there's a mission, actually. So a few of you, you got to come with us and we'll see you tomorrow. So it comes out of nowhere. It still works, but it comes out of nowhere. In this one, they fix that. They make the mission that's going to happen a ticking clock right from the get. So it's not it's not coming out of left field. We know about it the whole time. And the mission is Star Wars A New Hope. <laughs> Death Star Trench Run. Whole movie. Whole movie to train. So imagine that you got Star Wars A New Hope, but instead of anything that you got, we just get the trench run at the end, and then you get to see all the other people who aren't Luke training. <laughs> and Luke's also amongst them um, while training. So I thought that was a really good call. Like, it adds attention throughout the whole movie. There's a ticking clock. Uh, there's a purpose. It's not just, you know, the sequel bait that they had last time. It was a good change to the formula, a good tweak. They took the same kind of outline-ish of the second act and the third act and just changed that detail, uh, added that ticking clock, such a good call, and then they, they, might, they might have added like 10 or 15 minutes it's just like what is gonna happen because i haven't seen this from the first movie but we'll get there um so we get that and there's rising tensions of course between maverick and rooster because they have unresolved issues uh maverick had put his flight career back four years which is just like icing on the cupcake of you killed my dad uh for rooster Unbeknownst to Rooster, that was a wish of Goose's widow um, because she didn't want to see him end up like his dad. <sighs> but Maverick, the, the fucking gentleman he is, Later on, when he's talking about it, he just says he was going, he essentially says he was going to resent me for the rest of his life anyway. Why I resent his mom, too, as explanation for why he didn't tell Rooster why he did it. Um, but they have all this unresolved tension and like this movie. OK, so the first movie, I never connected with the third act unfortunately the final mission because it really felt like it was taped together with like scotch tape and good wishes uh it, like when you go back there's all these things missing to really pull the sequence together things like wide shots and seeing multiple planes together as they're fighting uh let me put it this way when i saw the first Top Gun, I saw it in one of those 3D post conversions right after like Titanic had been post converted to 3D. So imagine Titanic's third act, but the technology is not where it's at to bring it to life. So they have to make compromises. It, we still get to see like Jack and Rose fighting to survive at risk of drowning but we don't get those big shots like when the titanic went vertical 
and you could see the propeller and like people are hanging on for dear life and one person falls and like they're falling away from the camera and they hit the propeller and, like, boom, and they keep falling we don't get shots like that because the cgi is not up to par like if you remember when it was released as a 3d post conversion this was around the time that like iron man was fighting jets with like tip-top cgi so that third act it it was like watching the titanic's final act without those big scope shots like the shots that are meant to make you feel the scope and feel the danger that's what was missing in the third act like all the other fights had those enough to get the job done but the third act is a lot of like close-ups and close shots of like bullet holes and then like a missile shoots in one shot and then it cuts to a plane already blowing up but you didn't see the missile hit it and it's it's fine i get it it's of the time the technology was not there to really bring it together the sequence so it's not a fault of the filmmakers but as time went on it just didn't age well that last act and it, it's a bummer because that's when all the setups are paying off things like maverick earlier he he lost one of the training things because he abandoned his wingman he says i'm not gonna abandon my wingman uh oh, just all these things that are paying off and it just wasn't hitting for me because the sequence itself wasn't working. So if that's not working, how are the payoffs, which are supposed to just be sprinkles on top of the icing on top of the good cupcake. I'm no longer talking about the bitterness cupcake that Miles Teller has with, <laughs> I almost said Ethan Hunt, uh, Tom Cruise's character Maverick. Uh, this is the good cupcake. How am I supposed to enjoy all the sprinkles on top when the cupcake is mush? <laughs> Uh, um but my whole point in saying that was that this movie gets that shit right it's just okay bigger spoilers so let me jump ahead to the third act and all these payoffs that are happening that you can call if you've seen like enough movies you can guess them i guessed all of them except for who would have died uh at first i thought maverick was gonna die and they were channeling that hard but once they channeled that hard then i was like no my teller's gonna die rooster's gonna die because they are laying on thick for maverick you know that whole moment where he's talking to the uh the second in command who he had been training with and he was like it's been an honor sir um the african-american gentleman uh so that's that's the one thing i wasn't able to guess because they subverted both expectations and just had them survive and work together and give us a whole new whole new final mission to get out of there final detail to the mission uh and i loved that but things like hangman being said like they call him the hangman because he always leaves his wingman hanging and hangman's not coming on the mission but hangman sitting in his cockpit listening the whole time he's like Woo! or oh no um so you know hangman comes in and saves them at the last second uh you know when rooster's about to get shot down you know uh maverick comes in and saves him and then crashes and when maverick's about to get shot rooster comes in and saves him it's funny when they reunited though and like Maverick just whoosh bodies him. <laughs> Why are you here? Um, but it uh, it was so good, and like another thing that I predicted that happened was like how he was gonna get his crew back after he had been dishonorably discharged or honorably discharged, whichever one, at the time. Uh, and he does the whole run in like a hundred, one minute and 15 seconds. I was going to say 115 seconds, one minute, 15 seconds. Um, it was fucking great. Okay. So the biggest thing, I'm sure you've seen headlines saying like 
uh, alluding to Val Kilmer reuniting. There's a lot of heavy stuff with Val Kilmer. The voice thing is not just some inspired story detail. It's it's taken from real life um, and true struggles. And I feel like if everyone had seen the documentary Val, which I ha- still haven't seen, but I hear it's a great documentary, this movie would hit even more. But we get Ice texting... Maverick throughout the film and I mean you wouldn't be at fault for guessing that that was a that was a it was a cheap way to to write in ice but they couldn't get Val Kilmer but that's not what happened they got Val Kilmer and they had this considering Val Kilmer's like real limitations because of his declined health they made a really powerful scene without Val Kilmer talking for most of it and they did a great fucking job and then and then they have Ice pass away which I don't envy Val Kilmer uh, when he watches this film Cause that's gotta be fucking scary considering his real life health stuff, but that factors in and, and it's just, (sighs) this movie did the thing that sequels sometimes do, which is take a lot of the plot outline, the structure and do it again, but different in this one. He's not the hotshot new recruit. They are. He's the teacher. They're the hot shots. Hangman. Look at that hangman. He's a dick. Kind of like we thought Iceman was. And uh, Rooster is kind of the maverick surrogate this time. He's got some toughness. He's He rubs people the wrong way sometimes. But at the end, him and Hangman, they're brothers. Uh, just like Maverick and Iceman. Um, but... But then they they just add enough, you know, like like that ending where you're just like, I have no idea how this is going <laughs> to turn out, you know. Uh, or the romance. This is an old romance that's being rekindled as opposed to a new one. Um, and there were just there were a lot of crowd pleasing moments. Uh you can guess all the others, but my favorite one was uh, Maverick is sneaking out of Jennifer Conley's place and jumping from the second floor window because her daughters come home surprisingly and daughter immediately sees him. And instead of us continuing, we get the laugh, but instead of continuing with the jokes and stuff, the daughter just says, don't break her heart again. And I was, I felt right at home because about 20 other people with me all went, oh, oh, it was the best. Um, yeah, it was really, really good. And all the sequences were filmed better. Everything was also like done for real. Like they, it's clear that they did it a lot for real in the first movie, but the technologies come around to be better, you know? So we get a more satisfying experience this time. And it's great. And all those little complaints I had that kept me from really resonating with the third act of the first one, they're not here. Um, and, you know, we could have had like, 20 minutes shorter of a movie or 15 minutes or 10 minutes shorter of a movie if Maverick had sacrificed himself or Rooster and it wouldn't have felt out of place it wouldn't have felt wrong but this was better and not just because they survived but because they actually had like more time to make amends you know it's not just We've made amends because he sacrificed his life for me. 
it's we made amends because we both saved each other and we made this out of lot out of here alive and if it wasn't for both of us neither of us would have and that's great so top gun maverick uh if you want to rewatch the first one you got like a week left on netflix that's how i rewatched it right before my movie but yeah it was uh i don't want a third one unless we do something completely different which considering it's called top gun and top gun is actually the place where they tr- fucking train uh that would be weird but yeah this is a uh, this is a good one to punch you know it's it's not going to be like terminator 2 where it's like whoa or godfather 2 where it's like whoa like this is all new shit but i think honestly i said this in my non-spoiler like one minute review but i am not gonna rewatch the first one i think i think if i'm ever gonna rewatch one it's only gonna be this one because this is, or if I rewatch the first one, it's with the double feature for some reason. But, you know, if I want to rewatch a Top Gun movie, it's going to be this one. It was, it was, whew, glad I, glad I went and saw it. All right. See you around. I got a movie podcast. Check that shit out. Uh, links below. And what did you think of the movie? Like, subscribe, and watch the se- Nope, that's just a quote. And watch the sequel to this one, Mission Impossible. All that. You know, because the trailer just dropped for Mission Impossible. So- okay, bye.